Good evening, everyone. Welcome tonight. My name is State Representative Brad Halbrook from the 107th and founding member of Illinois Freedom Caucus. We are here tonight because a Chinese company, Goshen High Tech, wants to build a battery plant here in Mantino. Everyone is for economic growth. However, when you unpack this deal, it's clear that it's a bad deal for Illinois and it's a bad deal for Mantino. Goshen is a company with strong ties to the Chinese Communist Party. Tonight, my colleagues, some national experts, and I will go through some of the concerns that we have about this project. What I want to address here is why some are so eager to do business with China. The Chinese Communist Party is world-renowned for the history of its human rights violations. According to the U.S. Department of State, some of the abuses include coercive population control through forced abortion, forced sterilization, and involuntary implantation of birth control, the, deten the detention of more than one million Uyghurs and other minority groups into internment camps, forced labor oh, no. into facilities nearby or affiliated with the internment camps, and additionally, the destruction and closure of churches, mosques, and other religious sites, and the prevention of youth from participating in religious activities and forced political indoctrination or re-education. Goshen High Tech is in line for seven and a half billion dollars of federal tax credits over the next five years. And the state is kicking in an additional 536 million in subsidies to build this plant. The company is getting considerable tax breaks to construct a plant that will cost two billion dollars to build. The total subsidies for the plant calculate to an astounding three million dollars per job created. Why are U.S. taxpayers providing eight billion dollars in economic incentives for the construction of a plant that costs $2 billion to build? Why is a company with close ties to the communist, Chinese Communist Party receiving more tax incentives than it, than it costs to build this plant? The Goshen deal is a massive, all-Democrat deal done behind closed doors. $125 million of the 536 come from Governor Pritzker's deal closing fund, which was legislation approved by the Democrats in January during lame duck session. The deal closing fund requires notification only to the Senate, President and the Senate or the Speaker of the House without including minority leaders in the discussion or the decisions. This is a massive deal. Rev credits like edge credits are done with DECO and not open to public debate. This is the largest incentive package in business to in decades, only exceeded in current dollar value by the uh, Soldier Field expansion. Let's compare the deal closing fund portion, $125 million, to prior year's edge credits. In 2021, 223 companies received almost $226 million in edge credits. In 2020, 196 companies received almost $189 million in edge credits. Governor Prisker touts Rivian, but their deal was $50 million, 10% of the amount slated for Goshen, and they were an American company. Illinois has lost out on 18 previous battery plants, including the Rivian plant that moved to Georgia recently. The question I have is what was offered to these American companies and rejected? And if they had been offered a half a billion dollars, would they have located here? We need those answers. Additionally, we would like to go into this deal. Why would we go into this deal without proper disclosure requirements? Why would we subsidize this project with US taxpayer, U.S. taxpayer dollars without the proper disclosure. Chinese companies are required to make disclosures and share their sensitive information with the Chinese government. What steps have been taken to protect proprietary information and protect our interest in this deal? Again, I've got nothing against jobs. We all want jobs, but blindly, blindly going into business with a company with direct ties to China is a risk not worth taking. In closing, Governor Pritzker is doing his level best to make Illinois the Western version of the People's Republic of China. He now has went so far as to give a half a billion dollars of our tax money to the Chinese communists. God bless America, God bless Illinois, God bless you, Mantino. And now for some words from Ryan, one of our local residents. Thank you. Thank you, good afternoon, Mantino. I didn't hear you say it again. Let's go. Yeah. All right. 
My name is Ryan McAfee. The reason I'm here today is I believe the American dream will no longer exist if we, if we allow Goshen to reside in Mantino. The CCP has slowly been infiltrating our farmlands and economics for years now, and it needs to be stopped. The American people need to wake up and take our country back. I have served yeah. our fine country for almost 19 years now. Yeah. The American people have sat by and watched everything that transcribed itself. It needs to stop, big time. I moved to Mantino two and a half years ago in search of the American dream, and this is, town is where I found it. I am married with five kids and took, currently took on two more kids. So here it is, living in this town. I love it here. Now my feelings are scattered due to this cancer-causing factory moving into our town. I don't want my kids around that. I especially feel bad for all the families that have raised their own children for generations here. The mayor and his cronies have failed our town. They went behind our backs and voted for something we never wanted. The real question is, what are they hiding from us? How much have they lined their own pockets from this deal? If this factory goes through, is it going to poison the air, the groundwater which we drink from, and give people cancer? It has all been proven elsewhere in the world. And in summary, I will fight for our small town. It's the people for whom I swore an oath to. It is in my blood and it is my honor to do so. I will be running for trustee against all these guys in here. Hi, my name is Phil Nagel. I was born, raised in Mantino. My mom lives right down the road. My brother lives right over here. Mantino is my home, just like many of you here. After high school, I went into the military, right after 9-11. Do we have any veterans in here? Obviously, we have at least one. Thank you for your service. Do, now I want to ask you a question. Do any of you guys actually feel represented by the politicians in your district? No. Raise a hand, no one. Well, you guys can all affect that here in 2024, just side note. Now I want to go into the military side of things. Like all you veterans out there, my son will be stepping up and commissioning in two days into the United States Army as a awesome. second lieutenant. Yeah. And as such, I expect the politicians to represent and do what's in the best interest of not only Mantino, Illinois, but the United States of America. Right. right now we have Governor Prisker, we have Senator Joyce, we have Mayor Nugent, and then we also have Rep Representative Jackie Haas is too scared to make a position on this whole debacle, right? We have these folks that we need to get out of office, and I'm sorry if I make this a little political, but it is political, right? It is, right? Elections have consequences. We're told that every single day by the Democrat Party. Elections have consequences. Well, it's time we step up and we change the dynamic of this state and we take back these seats, right? All right, so what can, you, what can we all do, right? We have a literally a CCP-backed company, right? One of America's number one adversaries in the world, geopolitical adversary number one in this world, right? And guess what? The Democrats just gave them a seat in our backyard. 30 miles to the north, 30 miles to the south, there are United States military operations or military installations nonetheless. We need to stop this before it gets going. And while we are led to believe that the deal is already done, I assure you it is not already done. There are enough moving pieces still that have to play out that we can stop this. But no one, not one person in this audience can do it alone. It takes a group like all of you to step up every day, not just today, tomorrow, the next day, we have to make it so uncomfortable for them to want to set roots in this town that we, they say, we're done, we're out. And that, again, only happens when every one of you, just like you're here today, comes out and fights every day. This does not end today, it does not end tomorrow, it does not end in 2024. If you guys want to call Mantino home and keep it home, then fight for it. Thank you. My name is Carrie Rolniak. I've been a resident of this town for 19 years now. I've raised 
raised three children here, and I am disgusted at what is going on here. I found out um, about five days before Pritzker came to town about this, had no idea, someone had mentioned it to me. I was like, what are you talking about? I'm like, can't be in our town. Up to your oh. Oh. Sorry. I was like, what is going on? So I saw an article on Facebook. I decided to look up what Goshen really is. Is this what we want people to swear their alliance to the CCP before they start their shift at work? Do you guys realize that? How many of you out there really realize that? Exactly. We don't want that. We want people to walk in and do their job. We have laws that fight against work safety. If you ever watch on Netflix, there's a show called um, American Factory. Watch it if you haven't seen it because it's going to show you a lot what's going to happen here. But oh, I'm so sorry. I'm very nervous. <laughs> but this goes back to why is our people that are supposed to be standing up for us in this town, why is it so quiet? Why? Why are they not saying anything? Make me understand why they're not. If this was supposed to be so good, they would be out here and they would be talking about it. They'd be explaining it to us. There'd be balloons hanging all over. Hey, 2,600 jobs. Guess what? When I went on that protest when Pritzker came in town that Friday, I went up to the front gates. We weren't allowed in. I walked back to my car and guess what? When I walked past people, I said, please vote no against this, it's not good. Every single person looked at the ground. Why? 20 different people looked at the ground? You, there's something going on here. So we need to find out, we want answers, and we're gonna have to fight for these answers. Where's all this water coming from? They're using millions of gallons of water to keep these batteries cool, okay? So now, you use that water, now it's toxic. Where does the water go? Where's it going? We don't know, because they don't tell us nothing. Exactly. So these are questions that we really want to know. Then, what if there's an explosion? Yeah. What happens then? Yeah. What about the fire department? Are they trained for this? No! no. Exactly. We're so we're going to put them in harm's way? And let's just say we do get our firemen trained. What about the other towns, if we need them to come in? They can't help us. What are they going to do? I mean, these you have to let burn. So I live a half a mile from here from the plant. And you know what, what am I gonna do? Lose my house? Am I gonna be evacuated? What fumes am I gonna be breathing? It might even be hazardous to breathe every day. I don't know, because we don't have these answers, because everything is hush, hush. So I thank everybody for coming. right there. Right exactly, the exactly. What is wrong with people? I don't know. Exactly. So we need to find out the answers to this. And I appreciate everybody coming out today. I hope you guys continue to keep fighting with us, okay? God bless the USA. Thank you. Hey, well, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Nick Icavella. Uh, my reason why I was called here today, I uh, was on Jeannie Ives' radio show the other day. And can everybody hear me? I think we should turn up the volume a little bit. Um, so I, I work for a trade association in D.C. and we only represent American manufacturers. Amen. So, and we're, we're really the only people in D.C. advocating for American workers. And as you can imagine, we do a lot on the China issue. And I can tell you, you know, well, first, let me just say this is a beautiful town that you guys have here. And, and the fact that so many people came out here tonight and are working on this issue, you know, that's the kind of thing that politicians, not just, you know, down the street in the mayor's office, but in D.C., they need to hear that. They need to hear that there's real residents who care about their town, who care about the future of this country, and they don't want to see a Chinese factory built in their backyard. And a lot of people have said tonight that, you know, Goshen is a Chinese company. And I like to remind people, my previous boss was chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee. We received many briefings on China. And I can tell you, the things that you learn, they do not, you know, <laughs> they're, they're, they're not good things that you hear about China and what they're doing. There's no such thing as a private Chinese company. So let's just get that out of the way. What's happening here is we're taking your tax dollars and we're giving them to the Chinese Communist Party. Yes. Right. They already subsidize their own companies. 
And why do they subsidize them? So that they can put American competitors out of business. Right, right. Even if they promise to create jobs here now, I promise you in a few years, they're gonna take those jobs away because they've come here, they've stolen all they can, and they're gonna ship the jobs back. And we're incredibly naive and stupid for giving them our taxpayer dollars. Right. It should not happen. And part of the reason why this is even a problem is because Democrats in D.C. passed the Inflation Reduction Act against the wishes of the Republicans to put guardrails on preventing your taxpayer dollars from going to China. Our economics team, they did a calculation. $125 billion is set to go to Chinese companies because of the Inflation Reduction Act. $125 billion. China Joe! I mean... Yeah. It's insane. And, and why do they say we need it? Because of climate change. And that's what they're going to use this battery factory for. We, everyone has to drive an EV, so we need to have a Chinese company to come in. Well, how about we invest that money and we have an American company make the batteries? I mean, since 2001, when we made the worst deal ever, we gave China most favored nation status. We have shipped 3.6 million jobs to China. Wall Street has gotten rich. Big companies have gotten rich. The Chinese have laughed all the way to the bank. And we have put so many good towns in this country into despair. And now we're offering them a handout to come here and say, build a factory here. This is a CCP company, bottom line. We should never have American taxpayer dollars going to the Chinese. People say China's a threat. Our intelligence community, there's 17 agencies. These are incredible men and women who serve our country every day. They are not politicians. They will tell you that China is the number one geopolitical near peer adversary to the United States. What does that mean? They're building weapons of war to kill us. Yeah. Yeah. On, our <laughs> On our dollar. Thank you, whoever said that, they're exactly right. We're paying for this. It's a shame. And so thank you guys for coming out here today and showing that this is important to you because we need a lot more of you. We do. I think we have a question. Oh, no, questions at the end. Well, let me just say one last thing. I hope if this is your first time coming out tonight, please come out again. Tell 10 people that this is a problem. Every person needs to hear that you don't want this in your town. You should not have your tax dollars going to a Chinese company. And there's better pathways forward. We need to be supporting American companies, American workers. We should be building stuff in this country and not subsidizing the Chinese because their plan is to put us out of business. And we've been funding that for the past two decades and look what's happened. So thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is Pete Hookstra, and uh, I'm from the state of Michigan, and I'm here to help. All right. I'm a former congressman. I used to be chair of the House Intelligence Committee, and I was a Trump ambassador to the Netherlands. <laughs> but more importantly, over the last seven months, my colleague Joe Sella and I have been fighting Goshen in Michigan. <laughs> so I want to let you know you're part of a movement. You're not out here alone. We're going to beat Goshen in Michigan. Matter of fact, in six weeks, we're going to recall the local officials who voted Goshen into their community. <laughs> you can never underestimate the power of grassroots. They work for you, you don't work for them. A long time ago, I ran for Congress. I woke up in the middle of the night and I said to my wife, I don't like what's going on in Washington. I think I'm gonna run against the incumbent. She said, go back to sleep and you'll feel better in the morning. <laughs> well, I didn't feel better in the morning. And I ran a campaign, I was outspent 15, 20 to one, but I ran it on grassroots. I got on my bicycle and I bicycled around what would end up being my congressional district. And the message was very, very clear. The incumbent 
had lost touch. And we the people said no, and it's time for a change. You can win, all right? This group never underestimate the power that you have. And that is how America is supposed to work. It's great timing. He's putting an explanation point on the power that you have to direct the future of your community. All right, we can do this. We can do it. From the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, I can tell you, hold up the sign, there you go. history lesson number one, China is our enemy. They are not a competitor. They seek to destroy us and our communities. And don't ever forget it. And you have people who are doing non-disclosure agreements with the Chinese, who are doing business behind closed doors to do what? To destroy you and enhance China. You can stop it. Lesson number two. You yeah, know, this is, a lot of it's partisan here because of, the governor can do it by himself here in Illinois. In Michigan, you know, we put together, a, a, and I think you're developing here, a bipartisan coalition or a nonpartisan coalition to defeat this. Saving your environment is not a Republican or a Democrat issue. It's an issue for all of us. And there's a sign back there, and there's a sign right here. Save our community. Putting a 2,600 employee, maybe 2,600 employee, we'll see whatever happens, into your community will change the nature of your community. So from a national security standpoint, an environmental standpoint, a community standpoint, unite and unite with the folks in Michigan okay we're on different sides a couple of times a year when we play football all right but on any other day unite with us and we can defeat Co we can defeat Goshen we can save taxpayer dollars and we can save America for our families and our kids and I'd like uh, to introduce my colleague, another former Trump ambassador, Joe Sella. Evening, everybody. Long drive from Michigan, but uh, uh, we wouldn't have missed this. Uh, I wanted to just thank, uh, uh, a couple of thanks at the, at the outset. So my first engagement with this great community and all the people, people here happened through uh, wire points and the offices of uh, uh, Ted uh, uh, Gabrowski and uh, Mark Glennon. I was on the way to the Notre Dame football game three weeks ago. I called up Mark and I said, listen, we were where you're at now seven months ago. And I said, we're all in. I said, whatever it takes, we're here to share our playbook, textbook, tact uh, tactics, strategies for your advantage. And we'll be here uh, with you through the end, whether it's remotely or here boots on the ground as we are tonight. So uh, also certainly a big salute to the Illinois Freedom Caucus and the in, uh, intrepid members of, uh, of it. So the fight is just beginning here and certainly the Coalition for a Prosperous America and all your great work, Zach, uh, thank you for that. So uh, it's, it was really inspiring to pull into uh, this, your beautiful town. I grew up in a small town of, uh, similar to this just north of uh, Detroit and, uh, and to see your wall of heroes. Uh, the banners of heroes uh, flying that served and sacrificed in unique ways with their families uh, uh, before us and, and still do. And it was inspiring also to yesterday read the words of Ed Wagner, who I think is a local resident, and uh, uh, it really speaks to the, uh, the status of things now. He says, they work for us, we don't work for them. That's right. And that really, I think, gets to the core of the matter of what, what has happened here, and that is that you're here because the consent of the government has been ruptured. This is what happens when you have a hushed and rushed process. You have binding and punitive NDAs, no checks, no balances, and uh, uh, this is the this is the fallout. This is beautiful effect. This is a natural result, and uh, we look forward to linking arms uh, with you throughout this. Uh, you may have uh, read the article by Rich Miller in the C Chicago Sun Times, where he's swinging for the rafters. Uh, uh, 
describing his take on the status of things. And he says, it's not the job of, of the state, it's the job of the federal government. Well, he, he needs to, uh, Mr. Miller just needs to understand uh, that uh, our own Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, from the Biden administration, met with mayors. Uh, he met with mayors, again, not, not, a, not a partisan issue, bipartisan issue when it comes to national security. But even Antony Blinken says that mayors, supervisors, state legislators play a role in national security to track these very incursions and have an obligation our national int intelligence uh, and intelligence uh, agencies met in February of 2022. They summoned a bipartisan group of state and local elected officials saying, look, be aware, China's on the hunt through their private sector. Deals like this are coming down the pipe. Yeah. You have to be transparent, you have to be vigilant, you have to know what's going on because they, these are subnational incursions, these are influence operations. What emanates from them? Espionage, intellectual property theft, etc. no matter the target. So uh, I am grateful for your perseverance. We're gonna be here until the end. Uh, the great strides we've made in Michigan, I think is an exemplar for uh, you to follow. And I know Blaine and uh, his, his legislative colleagues have already swung the, at the ball on, uh, on some good legislation to uh, uh, block foreign incursions. And I know they'll continue to do it and we're here to support. So thank you, God bless. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Chris Miller. I'm the chairman of the Illinois Freedom Caucus. Yeah. Yeah. One of the reasons why we're here tonight is to give a voice to the voiceless. And I know that you probably feel unrepresented and we're here to represent you, even though we're from a long ways away. One of the things that we need to recognize as, as patriot Americans is that for some reason, the fight for freedom never ends. And, you know, we're in a doozy right now. But one of the good news is that we're not descendants of fearful men. And we've had, we've had courageous patriots go before us on issues just like this to stand for what's right. And it's time for us to, for y'all to rise up here in Mantino. And because I got a feeling that Mantino's not for sale. But make no mistake about this, the only reason why we're here tonight is because of J.B. Pritzker, Joe Biden, and the Chinese communist company Goshen that wants to build a toxic battery plant here in Mantino. This will cost $8 billion in tax incentives from our taxpayers. And this is all, now listen to me, this is all to fuel the climate crisis scam. Yeah. Make yeah. no mistake yeah. about it, the climate yeah. crisis is a complete scam. Yeah. And we the people need to start standing up against this nonsense. We are not having a climate crisis, but what we are having is a crisis of common sense. And it's time for we the people to stand up and tell the truth to the American people and the citizens of Illinois. Yes. All of us, all of us standing here tonight are for economic growth. As my, my colleague Brad Albrecht so eloquently mentioned earlier, but when you unpack this deal, it is clear that this is a bad deal for Illinois. It's a bad deal for the United States. And this is a bad deal for the citizens of Mantino. Yeah. Goshen is a company with strong ties to the Chinese Communist Party. Tonight, my colleagues and I will go through some of the concerns we have about this project, as we already have, and will continue to do. But what we want to do is, to, is for you to understand some of the things that China, that, as Donald Trump would say, is China, what actually <laughs> stand for. But the Chinese Communist Party is world renowned for a history of human rights violation. They have a long history of human rights violations. Their co coercive population control through forced abortion, through sterilization, from involuntary implantation of birth control. The detention of over a million people in minority groups 
in internment camps and forced labor facilities nearby or affiliated with internment camps. The list goes on and on and on when you think about the atrocities that go on in China. And not to mention that they just recently sent a spy balloon over the United States. They would probably targeted Mantino where they wanted to be. But perhaps Mantino will be even a new launch pad for the next one. Who knows? But this is a travesty as we see this unfold. But the bottom line is, is we have to ask ourselves the question because they're gonna wave intimidation at you and they're gonna wave lots of cash at you. And the question has to, has to remain, is Mantino for sale? And the bottom line is that every battery from this Chinese communist battery plant goes to feed this false narrative that we have a climate crisis. Every battery that goes out of there will help the Communist Chinese Party conquer the world. Exactly. We need to know that that's what that's all about. As many of you said, they are not our friend. And they are not our business competitor either. They are our stated enemies. And the third thing this does, it keeps kids in slave labor camps mining toxic, toxic rare earth min, minerals that is so toxic that no landfill in America will take these because they are so dangerous to deal with. And so just keep that in mind, we will not stand for this, and we know that the people of Mantina will not stand for this either. And I want you to know that the Illinois Freedom Caucus has your back. Yeah. And with that, I want to turn it over to Blaine Willard. All right, Brother Chris, thank you. Mantino, how are we doing tonight? Yeah. All right, are you guys ready for the fight that's coming your way? Yeah. Because it's coming, guys. And it's so, so heartening to see all you people out here today. <laughs> that's commerce. That's industry happening right there. We need more of it right here in Illinois, don't we? But guys, this is how this is how we do it. That's a coal train. This is how we affect change. Regular citizens, regular folks coming out, making their voices heard, standing up to a government that is unaccountable, that has gotten out of control, and has gotten so bad that we're doing deals with the Chinese Communist Party. So thank you guys uh, so much for, for being out here tonight and making your voices heard. Like uh, Chairman Miller said, here, Chairman, um, I'm State Representative Blaine Wilhire. I represent a district about two and a half hours uh, south of here. And it's my, thank you. And it's my pleasure to be here tonight on this, uh, this important issue here. Um, and I kind of want to uh, take a little bit of time here to address our uh, thin-skinned governor's response to criticism on this um, project. And you know, deal with uh, Governor J.B. Pritzker like um, I've had the, I wouldn't say honor to do over the past uh, four years, but I've had the task and the duty to do over the past four years. When you start getting insults from the governor of this state, you know you're pretty much over the target. And that's what we've been getting. This governor will not answer tough questions. He will not provide transparency. And the news media out here needs to make sure that they're doing their job to make sure that he does that because we have legitimate questions. Mantino has legitimate questions, am I right? You know, and the governor seems to have a little bit of a limited vocabulary when it comes to responses. And anytime he faces the slightest bit of criticism, what do we hear? We're racist, we're xenophobes, you know, we're, we're everything, we're everything else. He d dismisses, the governor has literally dismissed any questioning on this project he um, was quoted uh, recently in a Fox News article as saying that uh, any questions on these, uh, this project is uh, basically, it's unserious, it's political grandstanding. And uh, we're here to tell the governor that uh, our questions are serious and we're not political grandstanders. Is it uh, unserious to ask why taxpayers in the United States and taxpayers in the state of Illinois are giving $8 billion to a Chinese company for a project that costs $2 billion. Governor, hey, guys, is that unserious? Is that an unserious, unreasonable question? I mean, is it, um, 
you know, unserious to ask uh, or to inquire of this governor and administration why Illinois is ignoring the warnings of national security experts, including experts in his own, I, wouldn't know, I don't know if they're experts, but people in his own administration. Is that an unserious question? No. Why do you get Illinois to know all this? That's right. I mean, is it, uh, do we consider political grandstanding to want our government to vet a foreign company coming in here and getting tax dollars? You know, it, it, it's not political grandstanding to ask that these companies uh, go through the strictest scrutiny, to, to go through the Form 800, which is a, which is a very invasive form that uh, would, would uh, uh, vet out a lot of the things that we're wanting to do. But no, we don't do that here in the, in the state of Illinois. You know, the governor doesn't seem to comprehend that the reason that people here in Mantino and other places are upset is not because of the Chinese people, it's because of the Chinese government, right. all right? Yes. There's a big difference. I mean, if we're xenophobic towards the Chinese people for raising questions about this project, then is he not also xenophobic for two years ago signing in the law legislation to divest uh, um, Illinois investments from companies tied to Russia? I mean, it works the same way. He can't, he can't have it both ways. And, you know, not only is Illinois divesting from Russia, which I support, but we've also divested, this state has a history of divesting from all kinds of companies. We've divested from Iran. We've uh, divested from Sudan. We've even divested from companies that don't, uh, that don't support the woke ideology that uh, this governor and administration um, espouses. So this isn't, we're not asking them to do anything uh, out of the ordinary. But here's the deal. This, this deal was done behind closed doors. Yep. And to our knowledge today, and you know, the governor refuses to answer any questions about this, there was no disclosures. And we've apparently just handed over literally $500 million in Illinois tax incentives to a company with ties to the CCP with little or no expectations on our end. I mean, who does this kind of stuff? You know, it's uh, the people that do this kind of stuff are the people that are desperate for a win. Not desperate to do what's right, but desperate for a political win. We would demand a heck of a lot more from this from a U.S. company getting these kind of investments. So why aren't we demanding more from a company with, hostile, with ties to hostile governments? You know, I would uh, tell the governor that instead of hurling nonsense insults, Let's just provide some a little bit of transparency and answer to the, some legitimate uh, legitimate questions. Um, here's the deal: Goshen High Tech's corporate bylaws they literally require loyalty to the Chinese Communist Party. Guys, it's written in there. Article nine of its Articles of Association demands that Goshen set up a party organization and carry out party activities in, in, in accordance with the constitution of the Communist Party of China. The company shall ensure necessary conditions for carrying out party activities. Is that the kind of corporate partner that uh, we want, that we need in Mantino, in the state of Illinois? You know, my, my colleagues have done a great job of outlining some of the human rights abuses of China and everything else. And to call China a bad actor is uh, definitely an understatement. Right. And, you know, this is an issue that I've been passionate about in the, in the legislature. Uh, but because of China's uh, numerous human rights violations and threats to our national security, I actually introduced legislation uh, last spring, House Bill 2984, to ban the use of public funds and investments or institutions tied to the Chinese Com Communist Party or the People's Republic of China. Now, this uh, piece of legislation actually did get through committee, but it uh, faced a very strange death on the, on the floor of the House. But guys, it's, uh, it's time to wake up, and it's time that politicians in this state and around co this country put the principles in the best entry of our country ahead of radical ideology. Right. And that's what's driving this. Chris Miller was exactly right about this. This isn't dri driven from an economic perspective. It's driven by a radical I ideology. Doing business with uh, the CCP is uh, basically like doing business with the Unabomber. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, we should... Um, we should be approaching China as the geopolitical adversary they've proven to be. 
You know, and not, it's not time to roll out the red carpet for uh, a country that's trying to destroy us. We need to do a lot of things. We need to ban, you know, TikTok on government official accounts. We need legislation to prohibit China from buying farmland in the U U.S. And we need to take... And we need to take steps to ensure that the products we purchase at the state level are manufactured in the United States of America and not in China, right. and not by Chinese companies. You know, let's put money where our mouth is on human rights. And we need to lead by example when it comes to China. J.B. Pritzker signed the law divesting from Russia because of the war in Ukraine. If we're condemning Russia, which we should, how can we not have the same policies in regard to the Chinese Communist Party? We say for, we're for human rights, we say that we're for national security, but not only are we blindly doing business with a company whose corporate papers pledge loyalty to the Chinese Communist Party, but we're handing over millions of taxpayer subsidies. And instead of uh, getting a substantive, substantive uh, response to legitimate questions, all we get from J.B. Pritzker is insults and hyperbole. Illinois deserves better. Mantino deserves better. And we need to put the brakes on this project until we get some transparency from the governor and this government on what's happening in our state with our tax dollars. And we're going to demand that. Illinois Freedom Caucus is demanding that. Our colleagues and our, our warriors over in Michigan are demanding that, guys. And I know, Mantino, are you demanding that? Yeah. All right, hey, we're going to get this done because the power of the people. When uh, Everett Dirksen always, uh, he, he, he once said that when politicians feel the heat, they see the light. This is bringing the heat, guys, and they're going to see the light. So keep in this fight. This is going to be a long struggle. This isn't going to happen overnight. Nothing in this state does, unfortunately, this good, at least. But we're in it with you, so let's get this done, guys. So thank you very, very much for being here tonight. And um, happy to take a couple questions. Media. Media. Jeremy. Jeremy. Hey, hey, Blaine, how you doing? How you doing? Good, Jeremy. Uh, question for you, because you had mentioned Russia just now. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, this, this, the, the whole news conference, everybody here, is, it's, it's about everyone's here because of their opposition to the Goshen plan, a Chinese company, of course, that is, you know, has communist ties. But how come Republican politicians are speaking out in opposition to that, but when it comes for um, money to go to Ukraine, U.S. money to go to Ukraine, um, Republicans are vehemently against that, even though that money is there to aid Ukraine against Russia, another country that is an authoritarian regime with communist this, this ties. So, like, okay. why, why, why is it, you know, why is that, it's, why is it okay to oppose money to Ukraine in its fight against Russia, but then you're in opposition here against Russia? That's a totally different uh, issue for, for one, Jeremy. I don't really see the connection between giving money to, the, to a company that's literally pledged loyalty to the Chinese Communist Party and uh, giving, giving money to Ukraine. No, no. That's, the, that's, the issue the, that's the issue that we're facing here. We're literally giving $8 billion in U.S. taxpayer money for a $2 billion project to a company with clear ties to the Chinese Communist Party. Did you know that the Chinese Constitution requires that any company doing business in China discloses all their information with the Chinese military intelligence? I mean, doesn't that seem like a question that the media would want answered? I mean, we can ask questions about Ukraine all, all day long, but we're not talking about Ukraine. We divested uh, from, from Russia because of Ukraine. We've done due diligence on that in the only General Assembly. What we have not done is due diligence on China, and we're literally giving them money. So I think that we need to be asking, I think the press needs to do a better job, the Chicago Tribune needs to do a better job of demanding accountability from Governor J.B. Pritzker on this, on this project. Yeah, I think that we have um, spoken out here, we've done our piece, we've stood with the people here. I think that it's time for the good folks in the city of, or in the village of Mantino to uh, go into this meeting and, uh, you know, um, peacefully and appropriately uh, demand answers from their, from their local officials. What's an acceptable alternative, Blaine, if, you know, for 2,600 jobs, and if not the Goshen plan, what would be an acceptable alternative for 2,600 jobs in Mantino? Uh, 
just uh, uh, where, where we're at is a hinge point in uh, manufacturing policy, not only for the United States, but for the individual states. It really needs to be a policy, Illinois, Michigan, where uh, when given an opportunity for economic development, we're working to do it in the USA with USA companies or with a friends and allies country, such as South Korea, such as Japan. They have battery uh, manufacturing capacity with LG, Panasonic. Ford, for instance, is trying to build another uh, plant in, uh, in Michigan with cattle, Chinese-based uh, PRC Tide. And, uh, and for, yet Ford has uh, a plant, two plants in Tennessee and uh, Kentucky with a South Korean uh, company, uh, which is an ally, considered to be an allied country. So really considering the scaling threat and the adversarial nature of the Chinese Communist Party through their authoritarian government, we have to look to our shores first in terms of manufacturers. And if not, the quick second is allies and partners, and there are many of them as, as fallbacks. Just want to get your response to this too later anyway. Democrats have been saying, well, ah, yeah, in, in America, yeah. in the United States, hey. and in Illinois, you know, we've, you know, they've always done business with Chinese companies. How is this situation with Goshen any different? Well, number one, we're giving we're giving taxpayer uh, dollars, and we're giving a whole lot more taxpayer dollars than it actually costs to cost to build the business. It, this would be a totally different conversation if we had a little bit of transparency from the governor as well. So that's that's ultimately what what we're. Um, asking for we're asking not to give money to our um you know people who have uh, basically pledged to destroy us you know that would be that would be number one and just a little bit of transparency from our governor would go would go a long way and i don't think that's an un unreasonable why did, why did the rivian battery like can i just say and why did the rivian battery plant walk away from us what what did we or did we not offer them that now we're offering Goshen? and shouldn't shouldn't that have been the same consideration we want to do business if we want to make batteries in this state we've got this big fund billion dollars why why did rivian walk away from us and now we're going to subsidize the chinese communist government to come in here and build a plant and just just to respond to what you said you know democrats are saying well we've done this for a long time what makes this any different you should be asking them are they okay with what's happened for the last two decades and if the answer is yes, then I hope that they're voted out of office. For the last two decades, we literally have had policies in place that have offshore jobs and production. The only reason that China is coming here now is because we made the stupid, naive mistake to allow them to get our taxpayer dollars. These are your dollars. I mean, that's what's going on here. And I hope nobody's okay with what's gone on for the last 20 years. Nobody in office. We got one minute. All right. Last question, Tony. Chris? Chris. Chris, can I bring you up? Chris. He wants to talk to you, Chris. Hey, will these jobs be filled by the illegal aliens coming here right now and undercutting our wages? We don't, know the answer. We, don't, we don't know the answer to that, but we'll see if we can find out, and we will find out in time. I appreciate it. Can I call Chris? Media, media, one of your colleagues, uh, Representative Jackie Haas, is this her district? Yes. Part of the state the county is. is. Yeah, part of the part of this county is. Okay, why is she not here tonight? She's out of the country. <laughs> China? She, she's in China. <laughs> no, no, she's not. That's, that's not fair. That's not fair. That's not a fair question. No. She 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 and her family are on a she's on a family vacation with her uh, out of the country. I texted her last Friday and she responded very graciously and said that she would not be back in time. Um, I think it's incumbent upon all of us to relay our feelings to Jackie and give her an opportunity to hear what we all heard tonight from very credible sources, from people that understand this issue. And we need to, we need to give both sides, not just 2,600 jobs and $500 million. So, so, no, she's got part of the county, though. All right, we need to wrap this up. Colin? Thank you, guys. There you go. Okay, we're going to stick around and uh, mingle with the residents of Mantino Media. That will include the press conference. Thank you all for being here. We'll stick around and take questions down from the audience. The media will mingle around, but media, that will include the press conference. Okay, thank you very much. We'll be, we'll be here for a while to talk to everybody else at Mantino. Thank you very much.